shameless liars on paternity court. She's your baby. She looks just like you. That's common sense. <laughs> You generally shouldn't come to paternity court with a bag of lies, but Ms. Mellerson came to court determined to stick with her lie to the very end. And the funny thing is, Judge Lake couldn't even figure out the lie till the end. Ms. Mellerson here is saying that the father of her 11-month-old child, Chelsea, is either Mr. Merritt or Mr. Williams. And we are in court to find out who it is. I had met Mr. Williams in 2012. Um, and from there, it just began with our relationship. Your Honor, it was never a relationship. It was a sexual relationship. Sex. That's the bottom line, Mr. Williams. This isn't who had intercourse with whom court or what's the name of what relationship court. This is paternity court. And we are here to find out who the father of Chelsea is, not solve whatever disagreement Ms. Mellerson has with Mr. Williams. Besides, you only need to have intercourse once with someone to make a baby with them. Unfortunately, Ms. Mellerson isn't done arguing with Mr. Williams just yet. First of all, I am 22 years old. Stacy is 38 years old. I don't know what he's trying to cover up, but baby, trust and believe me, you were sitting with me and her at the same I time. I have no problem. So don't even go there. There was Mr. Williams is in court today with his girlfriend, and Ms. Mellerson wants to attack them both. Ms. Mellerson argues some more about how Mr. Williams was cheating on his girlfriend with her. That's very ironic, because when Ms. Mellerson slept with Mr. William, she was still dating Mr. Merritt. Now you're pregnant. Who do you tell? The first person I told was Mr. Williams. When I called him on the phone, I told him that it was a possibility of my ex being my child's father. I told her, okay, if it's a possibility, okay, we need to get a test and everything. She said, okay, what I'll let you know when I have my doctor's appointments. After she mentioned that to me, she didn't even have the same number. I never knew where she Ms. Mellerson says that Mr. Williams never wanted to accept the responsibility that he may be the father of her child when it was very likely that he was. She sent me the text message. And Go it ahead said, and lie. It turned around and it said, I'm glad Go you're not the... She said, it said, I'm glad you're not the father. And you I would sure have been did. A, you would have been a deadbeat, a deadbeat because anyway. Because... Hold on. You tell the man you could be pregnant, mm -hmm. then you say there's a great possibility that I could have changed my number. Right, they, 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 and he have says been. he tried to reach out to you, but you say he did not. When you had the baby, you sent him a text again with a picture, but you said, I'm glad you're not. Yeah, Ms. Mellerson, what's up with that? Ms. Mellerson says she sent that text because her child, Chelsea, looks a lot like the other possible father, Mr. Merritt. So at that point, she was almost completely certain that she was his child. Then Mr. Williams says he never knew that Ms. Mellerson was even in a relationship with Mr. Merritt. Now, what does Mr. Merritt have to say about this? He might be the father. So know. five or six months pregnant, she showed up at the door? Yeah, ma'am. She hadn't called you to tell you she was pregnant no, all that time? No, ma'am. She said she, but he, she, said she erased why. my number and or whatever, so... Here we go with this know. phone again. No, I did not have his number at the time. Yeah, Ms. Mellerson. Again, what's up with that? Wasn't he your boyfriend? Or is there something you aren't telling this honorable court? Because if there is, you better start talking, Miss Mellerson. But this doesn't stop Miss Mellerson from getting into it with Mr. Williams again. Because that's precisely what you should do in paternity court. Well, Judge Lake, it's hard to slow yourself down when you're lying. Unlike Mr. Williams, Mr. Merritt is hoping Chelsea belongs to him. He says the baby looks like him, and he's ready to step up and be her father. That's a great thing, Mr. Merritt. A young man that's willing to step up and take responsibility and really, really wants to be the father, and that's a great thing. And I want to commend you for that. Mr. Williams has his girlfriend in court today as a witness, and she says that she contacted Ms. Mellerson to help her baby. However, Ms. Mellerson had something interesting to say about that. And let's hope it doesn't blow our socks off. But she made a statement that she had a DNA test done and her baby was light-skinned like the daddy. When is it just me, but is Ms. Mellerson just extremely interested in ruining everything Mr. Williams has got going for him? Anyway, there was never a DNA test done, and Ms. Mellerson was just lying through her teeth. 
that right there that they're talking about, that's not important to me. What's important to me is trying to find out who the father of my child is so my child can be taken care of. I absolutely agree. Very correct. Well, if you insist, Ms. Mellerson, let's find out who the father of your child is by reading the envelope. First, we are going to read the results of the test done on Mr. Williams. It has been determined by this court and Mr. Williams, you are not. This leaves only one more possibility, right? Mr. Merritt has got to be the father. And it makes sense. The baby looks like him, and it's great because he's ready to step up and be a proper father to the child. Mr. Merritt, you are not the father. Ah, well then. Ms. Mellerson stood in court throughout all of this and never for once told the judge that there was a third man who could be her baby's father. She lied about conducting a DNA test and basically everything else when she knew there was a third possibility. Mr. Vadbonkir here is absolutely certain of one thing. And that one thing is that he's not the biological father of her one-year-old child, Dawson. He says the DNA test results will ultimately prove his case. And when it's done, he doesn't want to see the defendant, Ms. Fernari, again. Ms. Fernari admits to sleeping with two other men during the period. She conceived Dawson, but says she knows for certain that Mr. Vadbonkir is her child's father. How does she know that? Spiritual white girl magic? Well, Your Honor, there was really never no relationship. Uh, I met her over Facebook through my sister, and after that, I, I, I had unprotected sex with her, and I ended up going away probably three to four days later. Now, six months down the road, I get a letter from my sister stating that Miss Fenari's pregnant. I haven't talked to her. I tried calling her from where I was, and there's no answer. And then I get pictures in the mail. Okay, okay, Mr. Vadbankor. What's so surprising about this? If you have an unprotected rumble in the sheets with someone, don't be so shocked when they send you a picture of a baby in nine months and ask you for child support. You may not like it. You may think that's not how it works, but guess what? That's precisely how it works with biology, son. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Fernari, what was the nature of the relationship? How long did you date him? About two and a half years. You, two and a half years? Mr. Vadbonker, you said you had sex with her two times. She tries to say that we've been together two and a half, three years. No, uh, shortly after I met Ms. Fernari, I went away. I've probably seen her one time within 10. Looks like someone is lying here. Who is it? Mr. Vad Von Kerr, who says it was never a relationship, or Ms. Fernari, who says not only was it a relationship, it was a long one. Many married couples don't even date for that long before they get married. It cannot be both. Someone here is telling a lie. Bonker? No, I was not. So how did he hear about you being with other men? Um, I did tell him. You told him? Yes, I did. What did you tell him? That I had sex with another guy. Why he was... Away. Okay, it's now getting complicated. Mr. Vadbonkir says he's been told many times that Miss Fernari was cheating on him. And then he found out that she was sleeping naked on another guy's couch and she was taking a shower with another guy. But hold up, Mr. Vadbonkir. How can she be cheating on you if you were never in a relationship with her? The stories aren't adding up, Mr. However, Mr. Vadbonkir has some more things to say to be my kid. So explain why the times don't add up. Because I was away for 10 months. <laughs> Pregnancy is nine months if I'm not wrong, right? Guess what, guys? Mr. Vad Bonker did pay attention in biology class. And if there's one thing he knows, it's this. Pregnancies last for nine months, and he's correct. But he has even more things to say. Now he's pregnant. You say to yourself, this is my child, this isn't my child. I was happy, I was actually very happy. Then you start hearing rumors, things. Well, the, the rumor started when I first had one of my buddies come to me and say, hey, you know, Miss Fernari is out there cheating on you. I'm one of the guys. Wow, that must have hurt. Ms. Vadbonkur says he met another guy who told him he slept with Mr. Fernari and Dawson. The kid in question looks a lot like the other guy. Now, this is too much for one person to take, and it makes sense that Mr. Vadbonkur would at least doubt the paternity of this child. Mr. Vadbonkur thinks Ms. Fernari is only doing all of this because she wants him to return to her. But he says that's impossible because he has a fiancé now. Now, Ms. Fernari invites Mr. Vadbonkur's sister to speak as a witness on her behalf. It's about... So 
Tell me what you know. One night after we had all been drinking, um, she slept with one of the people that came to our little get together. Is that the only time you caught her cheating? That's the only time I caught her cheating. I mean, I have susp I had suspicions, but why? Because of her talking on the phone or um, just different behaviors and stuff. And I told my brother this stuff, and I went to pick him up when he came home, and he came straight back, and he was right back with Miss Venari after we got home. After I. Mr. Vadboncourt's sister says she truly believes that Dawson is a nephew, no matter what Mr. Vadboncourt says. Does she have any proof of this? No. However, she confirms that Mr. Vadboncourt and Ms. Fernari were in a relationship and were definitely intimate more than two times. There's been a lot of accusations about cheating from Ms. Fernari. What does she have to say about them? All these so are why lies. are all these men coming up to him talking about they slept with you? They're not. Your Honor, it's, it's all mutual lies. mutual too. It's mutual, he cheated, they were cheating. It was back and forth. I know many times of him cheating on her. I, I know one time really of her, I don't know anything else. It was mutual, it was a very tumultuous relationship between both of them. It was like fire and ice with them. So uh -huh. you're basically saying, Ms. Vadbonker, that it is true, she was sleeping with a whole bunch of different people. I don't know if she was sleeping with them per se when she was with, when the window of conception, they lived together above me. When she found out she was pregnant, they lived above me. Ms. Vadboncourt is saying that during the window of conception, Ms. Fernari hadn't slept with all those men. Anyway, Dawson is now one, and Mr. Vadboncourt has had basically zero contact with him despite the child having a serious medical condition. That's just an awful thing to do for a child that may be yours. Surgery, you went out and went to the bar with two other girls and had sex with them. That's irrelevant, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we so was, why we our son was the in time. the hospital? We, we was not together at the time. She asked me to come up yes, and see we Dawson. Yes, we were together. So I did come and see Dawson. She tries to say we've been together for three years. I have been yes, gone. Yes, we were. Two and a half. By the way, guys, Mr. Vadboncor wasn't just gone on some business trip or something. He was in prison. Yeah, this was no vacation to the Bahamas. Ms. Knox, you are Mr. Vadbonker. Fiance. Fiance. Yes. What do you know about this situation and Dawson's paternity? Um, she did flake out a couple times. We had paternity tests and she flaked out. Um, she, she's, it's all about David. It's not about that baby when it comes down. She wants him. Honey, you're not getting him. Sorry. Bye, First Felicia. of all, she's oh, irrelevant. She's been here you're... for like months. She's been here for months. I've been she's here for a year. I've been, I've been, I've been here for with my fiance for a year. She has nothing year. to do with any of it. I this is between nowhere. them and it's about Then why are you? This is just getting too messy. Can we please see the results of the test and know who's really telling the truth here? Mr. Vadbonker. You are the father. That's your <laughs> Mr. Moody used to date Ms. Vaughn, who is 16 years his junior. He says that she's a serial cheater, and he's very sure that her child, Kadir, is definitely not his. Ms. Vaughn admits that she cheated on Mr. Moody, but she's very sure that Kadir is his son. I gave her. I gave her the relationship. As time goes by, Yon, you ain't gonna believe this, Yon. But as time, <laughs> as time goes by, Yon. Tell me! As time goes, as time goes by, as I seen and pay attention to her reaction, how things change in her demeanor, I started questioning her about it. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you not coming to see me no more like you used to? When I leave to go, I go to, I, sometimes I leave to go to work at 12. She'll be there at 6 and spend that whole time with me to it time me to go to work. Sometimes it might be two days and I ain't even seen her. Okay, that may be painful. But that's no guarantee that Miss Vaughn was cheating on you or that her child isn't yours, Mr. Moody. But Mr. Moody isn't quite done yet. Somebody else. I ain't doing nothing. That's what you tell me, y'all. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't been with nobody. Okay, if you ain't been with nobody, I swear on God. I swear on my children, life, my life, and everybody's life. I ain't been with nobody. You don't want to come to find out I done got on her nerves so much about that. So she just admitted it was like, okay, it's a possibility that I owe a son. What? Ms. Vaughn on her side says she thought she was ready for the responsibility of a relationship, but she soon found out that she wasn't ready at all. She says she became a grown woman and realized that she wasn't interested in having a family. She just wanted to do her own thing and be her own woman, whatever that means. All right, so Ms. Vaughn, you admit there were other men you were having sex with during the time you were also having sex with Mr. Moody. Yes, Your Honor. Mm. 
And so, so much so that you had to admit that the oldest son may not be his. I did him. It seems like Mr. Moody has some pretty solid points. If Ms. Vaughn is such an expert at the dark arts of cheating, why should he take responsibility for her child? There's a very huge chance that the kid may not be his. Thankfully, Mr. Moody had a DNA test done for the first child, and it turns out the child was his. However, the warning signs about Ms. Vaughn cheating still kept showing up. When the car went the F. I said, baby, who you had in the car? Oh, I ain't had nobody in the car. I ain't, I ain't had nobody in no, your no, car. That's, that's I ain't correct. had nobody that's in your car. All right, so she so said, I, came, I told you. So I came back and asked her, I said, well, how did all the grass get in my car just cause you work, where you work at ain't nothing but concrete. If you step in grass, you got at least about 50 to 100 feet. And I know good and well you ain't did that in the car park right there in the front. You know what well, I'm saying? I, so, had, I did tell you. So I she, told so you that she I told picked, me. I picked them she out told up me, and I dropped them off so and she I got told paid me, gas. So she told me that she did. Okay, but that's not evidence of cheating, right? Anyway, Mr. Moody says Ms. Vaughn does this a lot. She seems to be an expert in not just cheating, but in also telling the truth after the fact. In other words, Mr. Moody claims that he's caught her lying a lot of times. At that time, Your Honor, no, I was not cheating. You weren't? No, you I wasn't. You not cheating then. I said around that time, I wasn't. What about, okay, no, wait, what about the hotel incident you finally okay. admitted to? Okay, the hotel isn't it, but I did not have, I didn't cheat it. Well, what you do? I was being, I'm being flirtatious. Ah, yes, hotels. Those famous places where you go to be flirtatious and not to cheat. I mean, that's what people do at hotels, right? Flirt? Anyway, this isn't a couple's court. But don't worry, Ms. Vaughn clarifies her statement that she didn't cheat. She just did it after the fact. I said, oh, you're asking me what happened at the hotel? This is what she told me. After the fact, after the fact, after the fact. Three it's uh, after the facts. I okay. I went to the hotel. I ain't had a sip. I just gave oral sex. Is that not cheating? Okay, yes. If you want to talk about but that. But she just said you yes, ain't cheating. Yes, at that time, if you want to talk about that, because you, ju you jumping, you jumping. So if... Oh, so she cheated. And she was very certain a few minutes ago that she didn't cheat. Or maybe a little oral play isn't really cheating. Maybe it's just extreme flirtation. Just maybe. So what happens when you find out your girlfriend's pregnant? Well, well, what, what runs through my head is it's a possibility this child might not be mine. It's a strong that's possibility. That's your first and thought? The reason, and that's the, my first thought. And the only reason of that is because I know her demeanor and how she acts at certain times. And the same way she, her, the same demeanor and how she acting from the first pregnancy is the same demeanor how she acted. Just as Ms. Vaughn has gotten cheating down to a science, so has Mr. Moody gotten detecting cheating behavior down to a science. He says he is certain the child isn't his because Ms. Vaughn was cheating on him around the same time she conceived Kadir. Well, you may say that Ms. Kadir, but what if you say something else after the fact, after the fact, after the fact? Yes, that's three after the facts. It's not hard to see why Mr. Moody doesn't trust Ms. Vaughn at all. And the only thing that can possibly restore that trust is the DNA test. Ask her why she failed a lie detector test. You know what I mean? When could do a boy, you Wait, explain. What lie detector test? I didn't give a lie detector test. Yo, and I got the pa Mr. Moody previously conducted a lie detector test, and the test found that Ms. Vaughn was lying when she said she'd been faithful to him during the conception of Kadir. And the most painful part? The lie detector test cost $1.400. The results? Uh, that, that thing cost me $400. I had to pay $400 for them lies. <laughs> he told her that he would get married to her if she passed the lie detector test. Mr. Moody had even looked at rings he wanted to give her. Oh, we ride. I tell her over and over again, whatever you have to tell me, tell me now. No matter if you slept with 50 men or had oral sex with 50 men, tell me now on everything I love, I will not go nowhere. I told her that from the part she got in the car to the part she got out of the car at the, at the uh, at where she was going to take the test at, y'all. I be doggone, we get in there. She takes the test. The man come out and call me, looked at me and be like, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good when they do that. Sir, she failed that test two times, sir. Wow. First of all, great storytelling, Mr. Moody. Second of all, how can you fail a lie detector test two times? During the test, she was asked if she'd had any sexual relationship with any other man aside from Mr. Moody. She failed that.
The next question was whether she lied to Mr. Moody about having any sexual contact with another man since 2013. She failed that as well. The last question was if she was now hiding any information about sexual contact with any other male since 2013. Guess what, guys? She failed that too. Miss mm. Vaughn, you failed every question. I did, Your Honor. And why are you emotional right now? What are you feeling? Because I'm not the same person I was. Everybody makes mistakes. I did make mistakes. I did lie. I was a compulsive liar. I had to grow up. I had to become a grown woman. And not just that, be better as a mother for my children. That's why I can't trust on them saying no sign. And you really cannot blame Mr. Moody for not believing her now. The only way to win back Mr. Moody's trust would be to check the DNA results. And that's what we are going to do. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Moody, you are the father.